Frank Stevens, Authority Program Manager for BMW Motorrad USA. The video you're about to see explains the completely new lighting system that was developed for the R1200 RTP. I think you'll find it very exciting. Additional videos are also available for the development process and we hope that you watched the features in detail. When BMW developed the lighting package for the new R1200 RTP, we had several goals in mind. The first and foremost was to provide additional protection for the officer against your greatest threat, which is people turning left in front of you, people pulling out in front of you. That's where you need the most possible warning. We also wanted to clean up the appearance and remove some of the Christmas tree effect. So we went even further to integrate all of our lighting into specific modules. So let's talk about the two big issues that you can do to protect yourself. Number one, you can deal with light intensity, and number two, with light positioning. First, let's talk about light intensity. Every light looks bright in the dark. People sell LED lights in all through the markets, and you never know what you're really getting. So the first thing BMW did was we decided to measure the intensity photometrically of the lights we're currently using and selling in the, motors, the current 2014 models. The hottest intensity package was a double stack Taurus. So we decided to measure in the lab to find out exactly how much light was being put out because we wanted to ensure that the new motorcycle did an even better job of projecting light. The Taurus light is the unit that is installed in all of our light pods. In several positions, including the rear, we can actually put two Taurus lights, one on top of each other, which is what we mean by a double stack Taurus. So two three-up modules produced this light signature, which is an extremely good signature for intensity as well as width of broadcast. However, we wanted something better. So we started measuring the lights that are available from not only our primary vendor, but some of our competitors to find out how those lights performed. And we'll give you just one example. The light you're gonna see now is called the T-Rex. This is a very, very bright light. It looked absolutely wonderful in the light bar, but when you look at it in the lab, you'll see it has a very wide dispersion, but not a high degree of intensity in the center. This light didn't perform the way we wanted because we want that high, intense heat in the center. So we continued to work with other lights and we came upon this light, which is a new version of an old favorite, the LED-X. We were able to gain that wide signature of the T-Rex, but the high intensity of the Taurus. What we accomplished was producing one light unit that actually is more intense than two of the prior units. So not only do you have twice the light signature, but you do it for half the cost. We then looked at the takedown light. The takedown light has been a very, very popular option. The current seven LED takedown light that we've been selling for years produces a wonderful signature, but we found that most agencies utilize the takedown light more in the wigwag mode during bright daylight than they did illuminating a violator stop at nighttime. So we wanted a light with a greater amount of intensity in the center so that we had more visibility in the wigwag function against oncoming traffic. Again, giving you that visibility when you're a block, two blocks, three blocks away to somebody that's standing there waiting to make a left turn or pull out in front of you. So again, we looked at various lights. One of our lights, again, was a Taurus. It's a favorite of ours. And we looked at it and we said, you know, that's not a bad signature, but it's not as good as what we had before. So we started playing with positioning because a Taurus is a nice compact light and would fit well in our uh, space that was available. So what we came out, we tried a lot of different positioning and ended up with side by side. And look at what that looks like. A dramatic difference in the light heat and temperature in the center. You can see this light a mile away, and it's very difficult to avoid. So we got the wide uh, base that we're looking for, again, to illuminate a violator stop at nighttime, but what we really got was an extremely hot signal in the middle, which makes it very difficult to avoid or not notice when it's coming towards you. 
Light positioning is the next thing, and we decided to take a cue from the studies and the input that we've seen. Again, we're looking at when a motorcycle is a block away, two blocks away, three blocks away, it's within a relatively small uh, uh, angle from the person observing it if you're looking to make a left turn or pull out. So we eliminated the 45 degree light, which quite honestly wasn't visible to anybody significant in moving mode that would be a risk. And we decided to change the front light to a forward and a forward 10 degree offset. Now what you see in the angles are just the primary heat of the beam. The beams actually spread out wider than this. But what we ended up doing with this signature is giving you essentially four times the forward lighting intensity that the prior model had. Because remember, each light is twice as intense as its predecessor, and we now have two of them facing forward on each side. So this gives you a forward signature that's very, very difficult to miss. We still retain the side-facing light, which again is twice as bright as the prior side-facing light. So when you're doing a protective service detail or pulling up to block an intersection, uh, you have that wide signature of light again from the side, both front and rear, uh, to provide warning. But the primary beam is focused to the front, and what a difference that makes. We accomplished this by creating a completely new light system. By putting all these lights, they generate some heat. We needed a heat sink for them. So the core of the new front light unit is a cast aluminum heat sink. On that heat sink, we then attached a circuit board. Why? We wanted to get rid of the ground screws and bullet connectors and make everything plug and play. Make it simpler for the dealer to install and make it less likely for anything to come loose or cause a problem. We then added the takedown lights at the front, the, the uh, pair that are side by side, as well as the side facing alley light. Those all mount on the underside, so the signature on the bottom half of the light is always white. We then covered that with a lens and added lighting at the top. That's where your warning lights are placed, your forward, your forward 10 degree, and forward 90 degree. That's covered with another polycarbonate lens with a single screw at the top to make it easy to get at to clean lenses or other things. And you have a completely new warning light all those lights that were previously hung on the outside, like the takedown lights or additional alley lights or supplementary lights, everything is inside now, protected, sealed, and away from harm. Everything's in one place, so in doing maintenance, you don't have any other items to unbolt from the motorcycle related to the lighting system. At the rear of the bike, we had a similar challenge. We had a lot of different lights that were hung on the back, both license plate ID lights, uh, supplementary brake tail lights, auxiliary rear warning lights, and we wanted to clean up the look of this motorcycle. Consequently, we started with a completely new base. Inside that base, we actually added what used to be around the license plate light, your blue ID lights. Those lights are also available in red if you're in a state that requires red ID lights. We then added an aluminum substructure, which also acts as a heat sink, and attached to that heat sink are four colored LED warning lights, the same lights, the units that are used in the front. So you have uh, two rear facing, slightly offset, they're not at 90 degrees or straight back, and then you've got uh, two rear side facing warning lights as well, which you can select whatever color is applicable for your state. Tail lights are mounted above the warning lights at the rear, therefore giving you the highest possible mounting location, just like you have in a car uh, above the trunk lid. We then added side-facing rear turn signals. Again, these are LED auxiliary turn signals, which flash in unison with the normal rear turn signals. These are very helpful when the officer is working their way through traffic, coming up beside a car, because normally when you're beside the car, you're not in line with the front or the rear signal. So this gives you visibility to see that the officer is signaling an attention to change lanes. We added the control board right on the rear module. This way it's much easier to install and easier to change settings if uh, any adjustments are required. Lastly, it's covered with a polycarbonate shell 
and you have a completely new housing. Again, two screws holding the top down, making it easy to access for changing flash patterns, etc. Everything in the flasher is plug and play. All of the lights plug into specific locations with two conductor plugs. You can select a primary flash warning pattern, which is for when you normally turn on the emergency lights. And then you also have the ability to select an inner clear pattern, which is the pattern that will flash for seven seconds after siren tone is changed. And then it'll revert back to the primary. You can make them both the same or you can make them different. Oftentimes having the inner clear signal that's different enables someone along the street who hears your siren but doesn't necessarily connect it with the vehicle, they can see that change in flash pattern and say, oh, that's the vehicle coming that I'm hearing. We've also created several dip switches on the board to make it easier for agencies to select what they want. For instance, we have some locations where alley lights cannot be flashed together with a warning light. So we have a selector switch. If you're not allowed to have side-facing white light, you can switch the uh, alley lights off when you're running in code. One of the bigger debates out there in the industry has been when you first press the button to turn on the emergency lights, should the rear lights come on or should the front and rear lights come on? We surveyed our agencies. On the prior model, we made it so that the front and rear lights came on. Press it again, the rear lights come on, which is typically after the, you pull over the violator. And then press it a third time and the front lights only come on, which are, is normally used in protective service details. Well, the debate raged on that for some agencies, they felt that when you first press the button, the rear warning lights should come on to warn the people behind you that you're about to do something, then press it again, and the front and rear come on, which is when you go after the violator, you're lighting them up and pulling them over, press it again, the rears come on again only, and then the fourth press would then get you front only. So what we did is we created a selector switch. You can have it either way you like. Whichever method your agency prefers is selectable through that flash actuation grouping switch. The third switch is to select a California steady burn for the left front light because Title 13 in California requires the forward left front light to be steady burning. And then the fourth switch is used for reprogramming because there is a micro USB jack on the board, so if any software updates come out, uh, the board can be updated in the field rather than sending it back to the manufacturer. What it produced is a smaller, lighter, more compact light unit. Notice the Fresnel lenses for the license plate ID lights, as well as the auxiliary brake tail lights and auxiliary side turn signals. Compared with the old housing, the new housing is actually lower reducing the kickover height required, and it's narrower, it's a more compact unit. However, we still have that age-old question of when you raise the radio box lid to access a computer or some other device inside the radio box during the violator stop, your rear lights are now facing the sky. What do we do about it? We've created a duplex auxiliary rear warning light that mounts directly to the antenna bracket and that light stays in place when the radio box lid is raised. It contains two of the exact same LEDX lights that are in the rear and front warning, all in a compact cast aluminum housing, which bolts directly to the antenna bracket. It's a wonderful unit. It's bright. It's clear when it's ordered. It's ordered in red, red, blue, blue, red, blue, or blue, amber. Thank you for watching the video. We hope you found it interesting. However, if you have any questions of any kind, please don't hesitate to contact us. You can do so by clicking on Contact Us on the Police Motors website, and any question that you send will be answered. Thanks a lot, and ride safe.